Good afternoon. My name is Cecilia Fajardo Hill, and I would like to thank Tanya and Instar for inviting me to participate um, in this series of conversations. In this particular case, is about feminisms. And in that sense, I would like to be very clear that we are talking about feminisms in general, as not in general, in plural terms within and beyond the category called woman, embracing the political implication of existing in this world now, before, and in the future as gendered and racialized beings, beyond the dichotomy woman and man, and beyond a wide history of feminism. Latina women and Latina, Latinx and Latin American feminisms going back to the 1960s and 70s, have been embedded in social and political struggles that pertain all spheres of society and existence, race, sexuality, gender, culture, politics, ethnicity, against all forms of political oppression. This presentation will introduce a group of artists. There are so many more than the ones that are going to be here today, both historical and contemporary that embody political resistance and political imagination, activism, and artistic freedom. They challenge the status quo of body politics, what we call the church, the state, societal norms for which society controls and regulates our body, gender roles, the right to abortion or contraception, up to representation, our human rights, and against all forms of racism, class marginalization, and forms of gender and racial taxonomy by which the body and who we are is you know, marginalized or oppressed. The temporality in which I think of feminisms has to do with the future perfect. Is the past of the future of the past. It represents the potentiality of what has not yet been realized and it has also embodied the possibility of healing and future. Colonialism and coloniality are not the last words about who we are, who we were, and who we will be. We need to think, place the history of resistance and creation at the center, as opposed to the history of oppression as the main narrative where colonialism has the upper hand. Instead, I want to think of what we will have been and what we are in the act of becoming, or what we will have emancipated, or emancipated our body in the act of emancipation, where past and present are intertwined in an act of becoming. I mention this because when we talk about colonialism, we emphasize so much about the destruction, but we need to emphasize so much more the resilience and the possibility of what you call survivors, survivance, like Wiesner explains. For Latin America and Latina, coloniality is at the center of our struggles, both because of our own histories of colonialism, which are multiple, but also for the histories of dictatorship, American interventionism, US imperialism, labor exploitation, state violence, classism, racism, racism, migration. It's very easy to think that what may be the reality of Latinas and Latin American women is only them or in Africa or Asia. When we talk about Latina women or Chicana women, we are talking about citizens of the United States of America. So we're talking about the presence of what we called um, within the imperial state, the presence of who we are as resistance human beings. So this is not about something out there. This is not about the struggle of who we don't know or who we think is alien or different from us. It's about all our struggles. And the basic idea of feminism, I think of it as intersectional feminism, which we need more than ever to visibilize, heal, the continued marginalization, stereotyping, and erasion of the contribution of women to both art history and contemporary art and to society as a whole. We need to create situations of solidarity, empathy, and affectivity between women and between human beings. Feminism in its more bare definition is the support and acknowledge 
another woman, and I'm not talking only about biological women, and the category of women is in construction. Who I am as a woman is different from another woman and another trans woman or whoever considers you know, femininity or the feminine at the center of their existence and their bodies. No matter who we are, beyond any prescribed ideas of class, race, ethnicity, and nationality and gender. So we cannot reduce a work by a feminist artist or what we call a work that embraces feminist issues to only the gender as we define it as a woman, but as an expansive notion that it has all forms of implication, social, political, historical, sexual, material, ideological, environmental. So I'm going to share some images now. You are able to, to see my slides. Here I was just simply showing this fluid identity between Latinas and Latin American women, which normally are kept separate, it is a very kind of colonial way of segregating. This was a slide about um, the type of literature. There's a lot of literature that has actually come out of, um, of out of Latinas, Latin Americans, and I was mentioning writers such as Angela Davis, Donna Haraway, Bell Hooks, Andre Lord, and also writers as, such as Gloria Anzaldúa and Maria Lugones, etc. And this image is important to me because it shows Felipe Guaman Paman de Ayala, the first New Chronicles and Good Government, is one of the first books that came out kind of chronically in the, the way that Spanish were colonizing. Um, South America, and these women were sort of beaten if they were either widows or were singles, and they were saying that they were beating them because they were like prostitutes, as it were. So they forced them to work, they beat them, and they didn't pay anything to them. And uh, and and for me, what is interesting about this is the fact that still today, indigenous women in the Americas are weaving. And weaving is much more than just weaving, is also a form of weaving community. And is that form of resilience that is important to me in terms of thinking how, even though colonialism tried to destroy, eliminate, eradicate culture, resistance, and simply enslave and destroy agency in human beings, it wasn't the case. And culture, art, has been at the center of this. And in that sense, for me, art and culture is a very fluid idea. I don't like to think of art in capital A, and I guess Documenta now is a good example of that. And this is Maribela Marmolejo doing this performance with gauze, another form of textile, as a way of asking forgiveness to the Mother Earth for the pollution in the Rio Cauca. And uh, she exchanges bodily fluids and, and so forth and makes this kind of piece of land art. But again, there's a, there's a real relationality with a sense of land, a sense of, a sense of belonging, the body and, and materiality. For example, now Bustamante in the Burrito is a performance that she did uh, in, the, in, you know, in the context of the so-called celebrations of the 500 years of the discovery of America, where she invites um, men, white men, uh, to take blame and to also, as an act of absolution, to actually take a bite from a burrito, a phallic shape that she actually ties to her crouch. In that way, they're attracted to us, her beauty, but, you know, she kind of queers the body of this man and she's social. It's a humiliating situation for the gentleman in the crowd. And Gloria Camiruaga um, is a video that shows the, the daughters of Claudia Gamiruaga, who is, was a very important filmmaker, who did a lot of filming and interviewing of women that have been tortured during the Pinochet regime. And in this case, she places the, the vulnerable bodies, the innocent bodies of her own daughters at the intersection of the church and state and the violence of the military and the possibility of the terrible violence that can occur in any woman in society. Uh, Laura Aguilar, she's turned as a queer Chicana, uh, non-canonical body into, you know, between the nation state of the US and Mexico. Or for example, Leticia Parente, where she's 
uh, actually uh, embroidering made in Brazil in her own flesh as a way to actually thinking what are the implications of the you know, nation state during the time of the dictatorship in Brazil. What does it mean? These are not neutral concepts. Dominique de Rezo, she's a Haitian and she um, talks from the perspective of her, of her culture, you know, Haiti is in the same island, island of <coughs> Hispaniola. So the right hand side is Dominican Republic and the left hand side is Haiti because it was conquered colonized by the Dutch instead of the Spanish is actually kept separate from the rest of the Americas, creating a further ways of coloniality and isolation when there is an enormous relationality, for example, between Haiti, Haitian culture, and Afro-Brazilian culture, for example. Sonia Gutierrez talking about torture of the young people during the armed conflict in, in Colombia, or Silvia Salazar Simpla talking about the oppression of you know, kinds of beauty in women, and she applies kind of live worms and ladybirds on her face and dead flowers on her head to question those normatives. So these are race, uh, political violence of the states and types, types of violence towards the female body are all embedded across race, ethnicity, and gender. Maria Lida Magliani, an Afro-Brazilian artist talking about violence towards the Brazilian body and the trauma of that also during the dictatorship of Janet Toro, Este es mi cuerpo, is a very recent performance from 2017 in front of the facade of the Museum of Contemporary Art in Santiago de Chile, which is a neoclassical building, the most you know, patriarchal architecture that can possibly be, where she hangs her body. You know, This is a history of violence towards the body, not only during the dictatorship, but still in the present. Oh, and the history of activism of of women, uh, you know, the mothers of the Plaza de Mayo protesting the disappearance of the children of women fighting for, you know, to depenalize abortion. And I mean, these are images from 1980s. And it's unbelievable to think that here we are today in the United States with the, you know, abortion being forbidden again, um, even to little girls that have been raped or. Um, um, in this case, we have um, arpilleras, the arpilleras in Chile that embroidered in a communitarian way the forms of oppression, the fact of disappearance of children, the disappearance of peace um, during the dictatorship. And or Silvia Minchu in Association Adenkan is a collective way of embroidering and healing collectively. Uh, situations of violence in Colombia as a result of the civil war or the armed conflict that has lasted decades and decades and the continued violence towards indigenous women um, in Guatemala. The conflation of the idea, you know, uh, these works are not really just about denunciation. This is not about victimization. This is about voicing dissent, voicing injustice. Uh, so Ana Maria Mayolino talks about, you know, cutting you know, the nose and the tongue and the eyes, you know, the impossibility of talking and seeing during dictatorship, but at the same time, she has these images around the same time where she talks about, you know, matri matrilineal uh, preservation and the continuation and effect affectivity. So you have both, in, you know, sexual violence, you know, women so often are objectified and still today there are so many condemnations of women, but the reality that is that sort of the worst form of violence is rape, like in this piece by Ana Mendieta, this is incredibly haunting piece, um, or oh, Barbara Carrasco, pregnant woman, representing a sister-in-law that after she got pregnant, she was forbid, for, forbidden from studying at university and forcing this kind of a gender role that is oppressive, or Monica Meyer with a piece that it continues to have iterations today, where the public is invited anonymously to talk about situations in which there has been gender abuse or forms of violence toward themselves and it's still happening today. Judith Hernandez, another Chicana artist talking about border violence and where femicide is particularly horrific in Mexico still today. Or Isabel Castro, she did a research at the end of the 1970s about enforced sterilization in the US against Latinas, Chicanas, and Afro-American Afro women, which is something horrific, but 
it's important to think that you know these women are represented in a way that um, they're not victimized. These are women from the next generation of being in families of women that have been sterilized, the danger that is in their bodies for that to happen to them. Observation self Foucault, a Mapuche uh, artist that you know works a lot with issues of indigeneities and queerness and gender. And you have you know a photograph of, of themselves here in this representation, this kind of feminine uh, sort of gender fluid body and the sort of historiography of objectification of you know, there is a woman here and an indigenous woman of, you know, the, the, the idea of nudity and, and oppression. Um, but on the other hand, there are more creative ways of thinking of maternity. Maternity is one of the reasons why often women are considered to be less viable as artists. You know, Maria Bella Marmolejo, that, you know, this piece, you know, she considers to be the, the birth, the giving birth of Sesquila, her son, and even the upbringing of him, the greatest work of us she could ever do. Uh, also thinking, you know, they say that, you know, God created humans, but she creates human beings. Therefore, there is a correlation between a form of um, deity and power and agency there. Or Lea Lublin, one of the most conceptual artists I've ever known, in 1968 in Paris during the time of the French uh, uprising, uh, she takes a child in an exhibition throughout a month and she, you know, brings up the child breastfeeding, you know, feeds him and changes the nappy, you know, as an act of creative act. Also, later toss the passages, again, ways of thinking of being reborn into this world uh, with your own agency as a woman, as a body, and as a, uh, sorry. Or for example, the idea of bodily fluids you know, Sofia Rivera, a Eurekan artist that makes these very large images, which, you know, place mentors, blood or excrement, the bodily fluids uh, at the center of the image. And, you know, uh, menstrual blood is something that everybody's averse to, and people are prefer to see the blood of an assassinated body before seeing menstrual blood, which is a biological aspect by which any of us is actually alive in this world today. Rosilia Sanchez that creates these forms of abstraction called erotic topology, which are abstraction that, you know, um, uh, creates these this kind of forms which play into, you know, erotic parts like breasts and vulvas. Um, Olenara de Barros in Poema from 1979, where she uh, puts her tongue inside the the letters of the typewriting machine as a form of creation where she as a woman in her tongue becomes a, these forms of fertilization of language, of poetic language in themselves, therefore erasing again this idea of a normative gender or feminine gender. For example, Felisa Burstein creating these beds, which in that time in the 1970s were caused a great scandal. They have a mechanism inside when you come close to them, they vibrate as if they were body making love inside of Cecilia Vicuña, uh, creating poetry naked in the sun with this sort of great acts of uh, sensual liberation of words, body and materiality. Vera Chavez Barcelos, you know, we know, um, you know, modernity and modernism, are, you know, very much related to the idea of the grid and she creates these principles of body which have from nipples to hands to pubic hair and then she you know she photographs them and then prints them in large forms creating a grid that can go infinitely as an epidermis cape forever so it's a democratic uh a landscape of any gender anybody thinking that you know we we have this enormous diversity and beauty in, in our bodies themselves or antonieta souza venezuelan artist that creates this anto, which is a form of measurement of the body, where she creates chairs and dances and, and structures uh, that are related to the form of her body, sort of to escape the sort of more Cartesian rational ways in which the whole world has been measured in a way where a body of a woman doesn't have a space. Another issue that has been always at the center of women's oppression and uh, um, sort of the way that women have been disqualified from participating as kind of the great ac actresses of um, contemporary modern art and, and everything is 
domesticity and here Regina Silveira makes a cookie in the shape of a of of the art and then she ingests it and this also relates to the notion of anthropogia anthropophagia but I think it's a very beautiful way of rebelling against the idea that artists has this sort of big canonical idea where women have, were, you know, traditionally excluded to, from participating in their own terms. Class issues are huge, you know, and tasks like Ana Victoria Jimenez, a very important feminist photographer from Mexico, that, you know, she talks, you know, she's here displaying this kind of taxonomy of cleaning, but not cleaning, you know, cleaning with a brush and in a toilet not from a sort of a rich house and she does this with many other different chores or Silvia Bintrup um, an artist from Chile that died recently that she would do this performance where she will actually invite the public and, ha and, and iron their clothes and sing opera and do you know beautiful places and uh, sort of very poetic gestures towards the daily, you know, the daily existence of life and race, um, the blanching, you know, the whitening of culture is something that is pervasive of every single transcultural culture in situations of colonization in the world, you know, Magdalena, Magdalena Campos Post, she's um, a Cuban American artist that talks about this sort of whitening of her body or erasure of the body by whitening the body of Barbara Carrasco, also talking about the same thing as a Chicana woman. And, you know, I'm thinking of Victoria Santa Cruz talking about, you know, what it means to be black and... Pasaba el tiempo, siempre amargada, seguía llevando a mi espalda mi pesada carga, y como pesaba. Y voy a reírme de aquellos que por evitar, según ellos, que por evitarnos algún sin sabor, llaman a los negros gente de color. ¿Y de qué color? ¡Negro! ¿Y qué lindo suena? ¡Negro! ¿Y qué ritmo tiene? Well, this video is actually available online and it's very beautiful because she describes in this video what it meant for her to actually embody and have agency of herself as a, as a black woman, as a black Afro-Peruvian woman. Uh, so it begins by telling the story how she didn't want to have, you know, curly hair and wanted to whiten his skin. And in the end, she says, I don't know, I'm black and so what? And then in the end, there is a full sort of expression of the body and the culture of the body. Um, Indigeneity is, is also particularly invisible. Um, here, Sandy Rodriguez is a piece on the left hand side that talks about the separation that happened in the border between Mexico and the US, where parents were separate, children were separated from their parents. In the case of here, Jasmine was actually uh, died in the hands of the authorities. So she creates. Um, an Amate paper is an ancient prose. It places a non non chon plant, which is an hour uh, word for a healing plant, and places a, a grandmother in there, sort of healing not only the land, healing the baby, and in a sort of a hyper realistic image of the newspaper of the mother and the son. So there is, on the one, a denunciation, on the other hand, the sort of the idea of healing, ancestral healing, going back, or someone like Linda Lucero talking about, you know, the presence of Indian and in, in cultural fairs, or Yolanda T Lopez talking about, you know, an indigenous mestiza virgin in her Guadalupe series. Um, Martin Gutierrez is a trans uh, Latina woman of Guatemalan uh, indigenous ancestry that created a magazine where she creates the Neo, in, in Neo India, where she plays both with stereotypes and forms of, of of empowerment and um, and and also forms of imagine imagination, this Im Im queer imagination of a future that includes all this kind of trans temporality and transculturality. Um, 
Oh, for example, Anita Ekman that uh, with Sandra Nanaya that works also on this idea, you know, in the Chronicles, they used to say that women were naked uh, when the Spaniard or the Brazilian, you know, the Portuguese arrived, but they, they had all their bodies, you know, painted with these sort of ochre uh, patterns and she, she sort of creates this relationality between this kind of very ancient rock painting and the body today and the indigenous indigenous bodies a form of sort of re-empowering in a historiography of femininity and and uh, material sort of visual materiality like here, here again yolanda lopez playing on the sort of the idea of the virgen de guadalupe which is mm, she transgresses by being a painter and a runner or alma lopez who is a queer artist that presents the our Lady almost nude with Raquel Gutierrez as a cupid underneath. And this image was sent, you know, was sent, so the exhibition was closed when they were presented. Or Yolanda Lope, people would throw tomatoes if she would project these images because, you know, they've also had to confront a lot of uh, patriarchalism within the Chicano communities. Well, Emilio Mesa Baines, one of the things is also about invisibility. Bodies that are invisible, cultures that are invisible, forms of creation that are invisible, that are excluded, that are marginalized. Amalia Mesa Bain also talks about um, An Ofrenda do Dolores de Rio. So, you know, is a, Dolores de Rio is a famous um, actress and, and singer. And then um, she creates this altar and she had a whole theory of something called Domesticana to talk about Ch um, Chicana aesthetics where you combine a form of altars and domesticity and experimentation, which is very particularly Chicana of high and low culture, popular culture, or, you know, Judy Baca creating um, the vanity table, Ale Tres Marias, again, you know, a form of pachucas, and um, with is a, pachucas and pachucas were particularly marginalized and, and castigated in, in the U.S. Uh, for having this fashion that was almost like gangster-like, but it was a very stylish, interesting fashion with this kind of hairs and pins and, and, and stuff. And so she embodies herself, the idea of a pachuca. And on the left-hand side, you have the chola, which is, again, as a low-life uh, Chicana woman. In the center, there is a mirror where if you want to be, see really the work, you need to be the third Mary, therefore participating into this social fabric that is normally marginalized. Uh, Olinda Lucero talking about Lolita Lebron, which is a woman that fought for the liberation of Puerto Rico. I don't know if you know, but Puerto Rico is a colony of the U.S. So in theory, you are American, but you have no rights to vote. And, you know, there has been a decades and decades of attempts to sort of become an independent country. Um, and she was actually put in jail and so forth. Or Barbara Carrasco, um, sorry, there is a Dolores, Dolores Huerta, who is a very important figure during the Chicano movement and the rights, you know, the rights of... Um, uh, for people who are working in the field, you know, against pesticide and, and abuses. Or, for example, now Bustamante in this piece called Soldadera, she talks about the participation of the of women during the Mexican Revolution, the Soldaderas that were there, you know, in the fronts, healing and also battling. And she produces these suits called, made with Kevlar that usually are used for anti-ballistic uh, vests. And she does a video where she, you know, she the shoot of the videos, and then also she interviews the oldest living soldadera. She was 120 something years old when she went to do it. But again, it's about kind of recognizing, acknowledging the role of women in the sort of historiography of liberation. Of Patsy Valdez, a Chicana woman uh, artist that uh, that has is been was part of the ASCO uh, group, a very important kind of conceptual and performative group in the 1970s. And she creates this kind of a very interesting forms of portraiture, self-portraiture and sort of forms of affectivity and glamour that completely counteract stereotypes of what it means to be a Chicana woman. Um, Laura Aguilar creating a whole kind of imagery of, of queer uh, Chicana women uh, in this bar called Plush Pond in East LA, which LA was the area of the Latinx people in, in Los Angeles, again, um, invisible in the eyes of society. O Mujeres Creando today, the graffitis um, in La Paz in Bolivia, for example, neither the earth nor women's 
we are territories for conquest or no woman is born to be a whore. And a Colectivo Feministas Las Tesis, which actually became like a movement all over the world where women would accuse of men of being rapists and they would point not only at men, but at the states of the police force. And, you know, it happened in France, it happened in Los Angeles, everywhere. It was a very powerful moment. Um, and I have a last piece here by Dora Longo Bahia, which talks about uh, the conflation in the historiography of America of the Cold War. During the Cold War, the United States, you know, had American expressionism as the greatest example of freedom of expression while it was having the Plan Condor in, you know, establishing dictatorship in Chile and doing all sorts of horrific situations. So she has this app where you actually come, there is a mark which refers to this kind of historiography of sort of abstract, abstract uh, political oppression in, in the Americas. At the same time, she, had, she updated about, you know, the violence towards women, trans women and black women in Brazil. So I'm going to show you a last video, and then this is going to be the end of my presentation. There is a, is a scream, is a little bit shocking, the voice of this woman, but it really talks about the horror of this continued violence of women today. So I really wanted to show in this presentation also feminisms. A lot of these women do not use the word feminism in Latin America. A lot of women felt that it was kind of an imperialist sub, sort of ways of thinking of women. And But I, I think of it more as this expansive idea of from the gender of the feminine, of this expanded notion of, of being a woman, of talking for, for women and society, to have this kind of very political um, resilience and create to denounce and continue to forge a future where colonialism and patriarchalism is not our reality. So during the opening of this exhibition, um, this actress will scream every time there is an assassination of a black woman in Brazil, which was about every 10 minutes. So, and a history of any woman that has been, or that we are attacked, or, you know, basic human rights, it should concern everybody. Thank you very much.